Hello, this is Mr. Reese, and this video is going to cover linear inequalities. The topics that, we'll, that I will cover in this video will be how to write in interval notation your solutions, how to solve basic inequalities, combined and or equalities, and also absolute value inequalities. So how about we get started first with interval notation. The basic idea behind interval notation is just simply to write your lower bound and your upper bound. And to denote that, what we do is we write the values and then we use either brackets or parentheses or a combination to denote those boundaries. For example, if you got this as your graph for the solution, that would be x is greater than negative 2, you'll notice from the graph that negative 2 is your lower bound and then we're going all the way to infinity, so that's your upper bound. Therefore, what you do is you write negative 2, then you write infinity, and we separate them with commas. Since negative 2 is not included as part of our solution, we use parentheses to denote that. If, in fact, this was a solid dot, we would use the bracket to show that we would include negative 2. It's equaled. Infinity, recall, is not a number, but rather it's the idea of going on forever, so we cannot equal infinity. Therefore, infinity always gets a parenthesis. So that's essentially it. You can write your solution as an inequality like this, or an in interval notation like such, which shows your lower bound and your upper bound. And it's always the smaller number first, and then the larger number second. How about we try another? You'll notice that this is a combined inequality the lower and upper bounds are clearly defined. When you write this as an inequality, typically the lower number is written first and the larger number is written second. Arrows, as you can see, are pointing towards the left. That's always the case when you write them as a combined inequality. Your small value is first, your big value is second, because again, lower bound, upper bound. If you're writing it as an inequality, then we put this in the middle to denote that x is less than this number and yet simultaneously larger than the smaller number. We typically write this with the arrows pointing left. As for interval notation, again, write your smaller number, the lower bound, then write your larger number, the upper bound. Because negative 1 is included, we use a bracket. Since 3 is not included, we use parentheses. So again, the bracket is for equals, and this is for not equals, or not including. Now let's solve some inequalities. Say you're going to solve this inequality. Well, obviously the strategy is to isolate the x variable. So what we'll do is we'll subtract 2 from both sides of the inequality, and that leaves us with this and then we finish up by dividing negative 8. Recall that dividing by a negative or multiplying by a negative causes the arrow to change direction. So our solution is x is less than or equal to negative 2. Here's our graph. Recall that we are to shade in all the values that are less than negative 2 and you can do this by choosing a test number either on this side or on this side to plug in. It's a solid dot because there's an equal sign and if you're writing this in interval notation, recall that the lower bound is way over here. That's negative infinity. The upper bound is negative 2. So there you are. Since the two, negative 2 is included, we use a bracket. Because infinity or negative infinity is not an actual number, we therefore are not bounded by this value. That's why we cannot include it as a number. Okay, let's try another, this time a combined inequality. Now you'll note the setup for this has your arrows pointing towards the left, which is typical for a combined inequality. And the way we work this out is by working the inside out. Hopefully you recognize three sides to this. This side, the middle, and then the right hand side. So I'm using these lines here to separate each of the three sides. 
Since what we want to do is to isolate the x variable, and that happens to be inside, we're going to begin by adding 3 to all three sides. That leaves us with this. Go ahead and divide out the 4, and we are left with this solution. Because this is a combined inequality, we're going to be shading in from 2 to 5 and a half. And for the interval notation, we include 2, so that's a bracket. 5 and a half is left out because there's no equal sign, so we have parentheses. Let's do one more, and this one we're going to keep simple, only because there's a point here that I want to illustrate. If you have this combined inequality, and you divide by negative 2, you wind up with this. You get your negative 4 divided by negative 2, and also the 10 divided by the negative 2. Recall that when you multiply or divide by negative, this causes your arrows here to change direction. So now they're pointing the other way. I also want you to notice the numbers. Recall it's supposed to look like this. Arrows pointing leftward instead of to the right, and your smaller values on the left. In this case, the larger numbers on the left. So you have to imagine this thing as if it were switched around. Like if you were literally to take this thing and do this to it. You essentially wind up with this. So that would be your actual answer. So just flip it around and what you'll get in the end is what you're supposed to get. There's our graph and that would be interval notation. Okay, so let's try ones now with absolute value. Let's say you're going to solve something like this. The key idea is to working with problems of absolute value is simply this. Since you are taking the absolute value of a quantity, and that quantity could be negative, then made positive, you have to account for the possibility of not only just a positive answer, but also a negative answer. Therefore, what you will want to do is you'll want to split this into two pieces, one for positive and one for negative. To do that is actually quite easy. Here's the positive version. You just simply write the same exact thing here, except no absolute value bars. So x minus 6 less than 8. However, for negative, you write the same thing with two, two changes. What was originally less than 8 has changed to greater than negative 8. So what happens is, is that the 8 changes sign to negative and your arrow flips around. Okay, now let's go ahead and polish this off. First, uh, worrying about the uh, x minus 6 greater th uh, less than 8. If you add 6 to both sides, we get 14. And as for the other one, if we add 6 to both sides, we get negative 2. Okay, now let's go ahead and graph that. x is less than 14 would look something like this, where we would start from 14 and shade in everything that is smaller, which is basically to the left of it. x is greater than negative 2, would start from negative 2 and go the other way. So hopefully you see an overlap. The overlap ranging from here to here. That overlap is what we're interested in. That's the solution, what they have in common. Therefore you only shade in that region. So that's your answer for the graph. Note the open circles here. Uh, one thing I neglected to mention before is that a lot of times people won't use an open circle, but rather use parentheses. And this kind of goes with uh, interval notation. So you can see that we begin at negative 2, we end at 14. So it, for the inequality and for interval notation, this is what we write for our solution. Okay, let's try another. This one's a bit more complex. However, the process is still the same. The main idea behind this is this. You do want to d split this into positive and negative. However, we want to isolate the absolute value section first. That grouping has to be by itself before you do this. 
that means subtracting one from both sides, and then dividing out that two in front. Now that we have this absolute value isolated, we can go ahead and split this into two. Just go ahead and solve each resulting inequality. Recall that with the positive is just simply the same thing as you see up here, only without the absolute value bars. Add four to both sides, and we get a solution. As for the negative side, it's the same thing, recall, except the number outside here is flipped around, as is the arrow. Greater than three became less than negative three. Okay, let's go ahead and finish this one off. Add four to both sides, and we get one. Now let's go ahead and graph each of these on the same number line, just as we did before. For x greater than seven, we'd get a region shaded towards the right. For x less than one, we get a region shaded towards the left. However, you'll notice that in this particular case, there's a gap. There is absolutely no overlap. In the last case, what we did was we looked for the overlap, and then the, the region that overlapped, in other words, the region that they had in common, would be the solution. But in this particular case, we don't have that. So therefore, our answer is going to be written differently. Since our answer for this cannot be simultaneously less than one and greater than seven, I mean, you're either less than one or you're greater than seven, but not both, then what we do is we just simply state that. We have x is less than one for this portion of the graph, x greater than seven for that portion of the graph, and since we have a gap in the middle here, we write or for it. So this is what they call an or inequality. So that's your solution as an inequality, and if you're going to be writing this instead uh, uh, in using interval notation, this is what we'd write. We'd write simply the interval for x is less than one. We'd write the interval for seven, and uh, x is greater than seven, and then we unite them together. So that's what the u represents. I also want to note again that with the graph we have solid dots. Sometimes people do not draw solid dots. What they will do is they will use a bracket instead. So the bracket represents the interval notation. If it's an open dot, we would use parentheses, just like we did before. So doing it this way is perfectly acceptable. So just to quickly summarize, remember what we do is we want to isolate that absolute value bar. After you do that, split it into positive and negative. The end result for your graph will ultimately be one of two looks. You'll get a combined inequality, which looks like this, and that results from simply an overlap. And if you don't get an overlap, then you get an or inequality with a gap in the middle. So you would just simply represent that it's either this solution or this solution. But remember, it doesn't necessarily mean that we can have both simultaneously. That's it for this one. I'll see you next time.